Tristan. Thank you for tuning in. We are Tristan and Michael, and you are listening to Fuse Transparent Conversations for Marriage, Family, and Relationships. We invite you to join us as we discuss topics that are thought about but not talked about. So tell your friends and family to check us out and join us on social media handle at Fused Marriages. Sir. Yes, indeed. So we're right in the middle of this month, right? Maybe it's close. You know, we just, February is always that short. It's a short month. Yeah, it speeds by. It go by so fast. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I never understood it, but I mean, you know, you got Black History Month mm-hmm. and, and everything going on this month. You got Valentine's Day. You got, I think we said the, the heart awareness. What is it? Mm-hmm. What, what is it? I believe it's, um, your heart, uh, Heart Awareness Month or yeah, something, like that, it's, something it's, like that. It's in the newsletter. So if you guys have not signed up to get the newsletter, you want to check it out. We email the newsletter once a month. It's a really easy, quick read. It gives you lots of different information. We can talk about finance. We talk about relationships. You can get some discounts on some things, um, the calendar of the month, fun facts. Just really easy to read, really fast. And in this month, um, it's some information about your heart and being heart healthy um, because it is, I believe it's called Heart Awareness Month, but I'll have that for you next month and it is in the newsletter so if you want to sign up go to our website um and you can sign up how do they sign up on the website yeah just put your email in um at the bottom of the page of the home page just plug your email and your name we won't bombard you with a whole bunch of stuff literally just it's going to be some basic information um if you you know you don't like it you can unsubscribe too but yeah you know it's some it's some good stuff yeah Yeah. i think you'll like it yeah we have some fun things in there so um getting into today's show don't forget our word of the month our word this month is agape um we are trying to grow in all areas um so learning new vocabulary and how it applies to our relationship as well as next month in the month of march we are going to start um, a contest so you want to make sure that you're writing down the words of the month and remembering them so that you can win some really cool free stuff just um, real quick on on, on, a, on agape it's like you know i think that's a i mean it's a new standard of of trying to how to, how to love somebody hmm. i think you know if you go back and listen to the, the previous episode you know that was on the first of the month i mean you can kind of get a little indication what what agape was about but like we're just trying to raise the bar yeah. Trying to raise the bar, you know, for can, yeah, for all of us, can we achieve it? Maybe, maybe, I don't know, but we're going to shoot for it. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's why I, I like, I like that word agape, you know, trying to, trying to love somebody just like how God will love them. Like, I don't know if that's possible, but it's something, it's something to shoot for. Yeah. We keep, we keep trying. We keep trying. We keep trying. <laughs> no, trying to grow deeper and um, be more expansive and more expensive. Yeah every day in our love and care and concern and how we handle each other, which brings us to our topic today. Yes. Um, so today we are talking about relationship tendencies. You want to dig in a little bit? Yeah. I mean, um, you talk about tendencies, right? I think we all got little different things and really the conversation kind of came up. We were, me and Tristan were in the kitchen talking and a situation happened with, no, not with us, with somebody else. Okay, okay. With somebody else's situation, not this time. With yeah, somebody else's yeah. situation. We got enough situations already, right. so, you know, that's just what it is. But, like, we try to learn from everybody's situation, right? We do. So we try and to, like... you should, too. <laughs> we try to learn. We try to learn from other people so you don't have to go through it. So, yeah. Anyway, so go so we were in the process of learning from somebody's situation. We did. I asked a question. I said, hey, when you are in a stressful situation similar to this, how would you respond? Mm-hmm. Right? And... I think that's like, to me, that's like a tendency question. Mm. Okay. My tendency to respond to life events, situations is like this. Mm-hmm. And to me, I think I want to understand it because in the event that we end up going through something similar, it was like a basic, not a basic, but like a, a family ordeal. How would you respond? And I think about how would I respond to it? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know what? We got tendencies that we often are trying to figure out and it can help you in the in the in the in the forefront of saying, okay, I think they may respond. This is how I can help them, or how I can help us get over that hump. Mm-hmm. Oof, you said a mouthful here. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna mm-hmm. break it down. Yeah. So we are talking about our tendency towards certain behaviors. So let's start by talking about self, because you said, okay, mm-hmm. there's there's self in various situations, and then there's our partner. So let's talk about self a little bit. Um, I know when when you start talking about how do I respond, that's a really like kind of reflective and you have to be super honest Mm -hmm. to approach that in a way. Not how would you like to respond, but how do you respond? What do you think about that? Yeah, um, I think some people have the ability to it's a learned ability, I think, to like look at themselves and say, 
Sure. This is what's going on. This is how I see the situation where that I am in, like right now, what everybody else is doing. And I think because like, to me, it was sports that kind of helped me to kind of do it. Right. So somebody else may be like debate team. You like, you like, you gotta be, you gotta analyze yourself when you're on the debate team. What do you mean? It? What do you mean in sports? Cause we do have some mm-hmm. athletes out True. there that are listening to us. When you say sports helped you analyze yourself, talk me through. Yeah. So, you know, me being as a basketball player, you know, coming up, I'm like, okay, I wanted to try to perfect my game. Mm-hmm. And part of me perfecting my game is really understanding my tendencies of what I'm good at and what I'm not. Right. And sometimes you don't, if you're just playing the game, you're just part of life, you may not be saying, okay, how am I interacting with life, though? How am I interacting, in this case, the basketball court, the basketball game, or the or the opponent? Mm-hmm. And I learned, I believe, I'm, 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 I'm suspecting that I learned that through basketball mm-hmm. and really analyzing who I am, what I'm about, how can I change it? If I can't change it, cool, but okay, then how I'm going to respond to whatever the events that are happening on the court and then I just started to try to apply that to life. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, I'm not perfect at trying to like, yeah, analyze myself and getting it right all the time. But I do try to take a step back and say, OK, this is what's happening. I would have two things to say about this. So mm-hmm. first, as we analyze ourselves, I have found that people that are able to kind of separate themselves from reality and look at how they are in okay. life, operate in life are really gracious. Um, and tend to be more kind and less, um, you know, less judgmental. And I say that because they've been able to step back from a situation and to say, I see how they're dealing with it, but this is the event. This is the, this is the challenge. Um, how would I approach this? Um, and, and because it allows you to now say, I see how they got where they are because of this situation. I can see that journey. And it does take some time, it, like as you referenced, it does take some time to be able to reflect on something. Now, onto the time thing, and you can disagree, I'm okay with that. No, like, if, I but I, I, I just feel that people that are willing to take the, to step back and to mm-hmm. say, how would I? will not look at somebody and be like, mm, well, they should. Da, da, da. I, I can't see somebody that is willing to be compassionate towards themselves. Um, and, and we've talked about this before, but compassionate towards themselves, be hateful or evil towards somebody else. Um, yeah. We should, you know, it's, it's scriptural. It's, you know, a kind of global law. You should treat somebody how you want to be treated. And if you treat yourself with mm-hmm. kindness and you honor yourself and you honor your own feelings, do the same to somebody else. They might not be at the place that you are to have that level um, of insight um, on a specific, you know, situation. So anyway, I think that you um, you are going to be a little bit more um, compassionate, and insightful if you're willing to take a step back. Now, in saying that, I also think that you should try as often as possible mm-hmm. to do this before and after events. So um, if you, for example, if somebody you know, somebody, you, you go to a funeral, somebody that might've passed away, um, and you see how the, the immediate family is handling it. You can look at yourself. Now, nobody wants to reflect on this necessarily, but say, how would I, how, how would I want to handle this? How would I go about this? What would, uh, what would my response be? And then if something, maybe not in this specific example, but if something happens to, to look back and say, did I handle that appropriately? If I have an argument with my spouse over, you know, how much money he's spending, how would I approach that conversation? And then after, if there is a conflict about money, did I handle myself well? Did I handle my spouse well? What should I have done? What should I not have said? At what point did this argument escalate and get out of control? Was it something that I did? Was it something I may have misunderstood? Could I have said it differently or done it differently? And I think by by deciding to um, look at the situation in this in this fashion, then you allow yourself not only to grow, but you allow the relationship to grow. Yeah, I think I think truth be told, right? We all got tendencies, and I ain't talking about good ones, right? Of course, we uh, we all make us let's let's, let's 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 make let's make sure we, you know everybody right. on the same page, right? We on the same page, are they on the same page? with yeah. us, right? No, like we all have tendencies, right? And um and a lot of times they're not they're not very good. Mm-hmm. And to be honest with yourself, we say, you know what? Every time you bring up something about my kid, I get a little bit, you know. That's a tendency. Mm-hmm. Like I'm on edge. Like, okay, what she about to say? What they about to, t- you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. like, that's a tendency. 
And like to almost to be able to recognize that sometimes it's like, you know, okay, you got to take a step back or somebody has to tell you Mm -hmm. somebody that loves you Mm -hmm. that has to tell you. And I call that person like a coach. You know what I mean? A coach will tell you if you're on the the court, hey, you know what? Every time they start being football, every time they start blitzing to your right, you take off running without even without even looking. Mm -hmm. Right. Every time I bring up a conversation about money. You got this tendency about like, man, like, hold on, you get antsy, jittery, like you needed four cups of coffee you just drank or something, like, like it's what's real going, life. What's going? I was like, I said, I would say, no, I you said, throw a rock, is, rock in a, in a, look, in a, a dog holly, that's when you hit. Transparent conversation. So when Michael and I first got married, talking about money was really uncomfortable for me. It was, it was something I didn't very. grow up talking about money. What did you say? No, I said very. I agree. Yeah, I didn't very. grow up talking about it. It was, I have mine and you have yours. There's no reason for us to really mm-hmm. kind of mix this thing. And even though we had talked about it ahead and we said we're going to get a joint account, I still in my mind said, we're going to have a joint account, but I'm going to have some money over here because this is what I work for, you know? And, that, mm-hmm. and unbeknownst likely to Michael, because in his family, they talked about money very freely. So my tendency, my propensity was already to be like, uh, you don't need to know what's in this account. I, you know, I am all about at the time, like, you know, I tuck some money away, <laughs> you know, yeah, just, all that. Like I to can, me, I can just, get it. Y'all I was trying to figure it out. And he, and he was never <laughs> like cruel or controlling with money because that can push out some tendencies yeah, as that's well. True. That's true. Um, but for me, it was just, it was just made me very uncomfortable, it just made me very, very nervous. And it took some time. It took me to say, why am I like this? Is there something that I need from my partner so that I'm not like this? Is there some mm-hmm. sort of affirmation? Is he going to allow me to transition as I transition, but kind of pull me from that place? Because sometimes partners, your partner might need some help in addressing that tendency and it can't be hmm. you need to change you don't need to it can't and i'm talking like a woman i don't know what what y'all sound like yeah, our voice um, ain't that high with it but go ahead need, you need to change you need <laughs> to make right. a different choice there you, you, know? go. you trip it okay that doesn't help <laughs> yeah. you know like they we talked about this the other day never tell a woman to calm down just don't yeah, you don't know that. why she's upset and we were watching a show the other day and the key word on the show i'm not even going to mention the show yeah, that's the show it's fine <laughs> the key word on the show was trigger Like everybody was talking about being triggered. Um, But I say that because that has become a common when we first started counseling and we were talking about triggers. It was not something that was like common colloquial language. Now everybody's talking about triggers. Mm -hmm. But in that there is, you know, a monicum of truth, knowing what what triggers you. What can I say to Michael in an argument that is going to get him heated? What can he say to me if you tell me to calm down, especially if I'm not hype? It's. It's gonna be not hype, hype is okay. relative, but go ahead. Not hype, okay. <laughs> no, you like <laughs> then you really ask yeah. him to see how far I'm not. <laughs> I'll show you hype. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We still pray for me, okay. But that's so knowing those things. So Michael knows Tristan has okay, she's she's gonna struggle with some conversations mm-hmm. about money. That's not something that she just freely discusses but now that we've been working on it we can sit down but michael also knows in the back of his mind okay this is an uncomfortable conversation no matter how much or how little or what's going on or what we're paying or what whatever we're doing conversations that are are built around that it comes from a long line of before michael that i have brought to this space so that's my tendency is to want to shut down you know if we're having a debate (laughs) i don't Mm -hmm. know if debate's the right word but michael has a propensity to be like, I don't have nothing to say. I'm done. I'm wrapped. You know what? You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't take it. Because for me, when we are having um, an animated discussion, mm. I need to get to the end. Need resolution. I, yeah, there needs to be a resolution. It needs to be a very clear from here. This is where we're going. Mm-hmm. There, there ain't no issue. We good. But Michael, he'll be like, I'm good. You have anything to say? Nah. You don't have anything to say. Nothing. No. Michael, I need Nothing. you to have something to say. I need to process I mean, this thing. But he won't say that part. He'll yeah. just process that thing. Okay? I process that so, thing. I process but it. I had to learn, once I see him starting to get to this shutdown mode, yeah. okay, he needs a minute. And I'll say, I say, you need a minute? Yeah, I need a minute. And I can't be like, well, you ain't got a minute, you know? I have to be like, all right, you know? And that's a, and that's a learning thing. So we can't expect this thing to happen all at once. Now, I kind of ble- bled into, I was saying we're reflecting on ourselves, mm-hmm. and we bled into the second part of this conversation, which is learning the tendencies of your spouse. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to chime in a little bit what you yep. said before before we jump into that okay. to that next part of it. It's like, how beautiful would it be, right? And we didn't do this, y'all. I'm telling you right now. I'm, I'm, I'm going back. I wish you would have. But how beautiful would it be? You know what? I mean, I know you. We kind of get to know each other. We get to this place like, you know, we're trying to like really just build a good, strong bond. We haven't, you know, main thing official yet. But we kind of like, you know, we ain't got married yet, yet. But I come here. You know what? Hey, Tristan, I got these tendencies. And, um, you know, one of them, you know, I've been married before. So, you know, if you use the the, the D word, you know, the divorce word, it's going to it's going to trigger me a little bit. So just be on the lookout for that. And, you know, my, my the kids from, you know, the previous relationship. I'm a little sensitive, protective around them. It's a, you know, I got some tendencies of kind of responding in a real aggressive way that may be kind of, you know, push you back. I don't want that to be. How beautiful would that be? Like, it versus. Our marriage so yeah, we much. didn't do that, y'all. We didn't do that. But, like, I'm thinking, like, if I would have told you my tendencies and you would have been like, wow, okay, you make it help me, like, overcome them even faster, right? We ultimately, you help you still. Why? Okay. This might help some people. Yeah. Why didn't you? Why didn't I? I think it was it's a vulnerability piece. That's the word. You know what I mean? That's it's like, word. that's a very vulnerable place to say, hey, I ain't all who you think I am. Mm-hmm. And like to like on your inside, be like, okay, are they going to see me the same? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like I, that takes, that's a, it takes a very vulnerable person to kind of express that. Yeah. I think that, I think it would have been beautiful. It would have been extremely yeah. helpful for our relationship to have some concept because we look, I think for the first five, maybe plus years of our relationship, we talked about divorce thing out. almost every, <laughs> she talked about it. I didn't talk about it. I, I didn't use the word cause it was sensitive to me. So I never, he didn't use I, the I word. never used it, but like I, I shunned away from it. Yeah, he would just I tried leave. to shy away from it. <laughs> he would just leave and not come back. Yeah, I leave and not come back. You know what? Uh, I ain't having this conversation right now. <laughs> That's not healthy. So don't do that. Don't do that. We made it by God's grace. Okay. Um, but I think that you used an important word when you yeah. said vulnerability. Um, and we do not recommend you do this up front. Don't just be like, look, you know, this, this, and this. Really, you want to be vulnerable yeah. with somebody that you can trust, that you've built a trusting relationship with. That's in your friendships. That's in your mm-hmm. relationship with your spouse. Um, even the level of vulnerability you show to your children and at what age you show them different sides That's of good. yourself. Yeah. Um, but I say this in the context of, of building marriages. A lot of the people that listen to us, a lot of you guys are married and there's quite a, a number of you that have reached out that are, you know, trending that direction. So being vulnerable as, as quickly as is safe for the relationship um, is important because kind of putting some of those things up front can help you create game plans for what to do. And I use the term game plans because if you know, we talk, we use sports analogies a lot. So Mm -hmm. Michael used the example of kind of um, improving his game, but I grew up loving football. I'm from Texas, you know, it's what we do, okay? Too bad and, them Cowboys ain't still playing. But anyway, they, did, they didn't quite okay, make it no, that far. Disrespectful. Well, they ain't won a playoff game no, in, I, in over 20 not, years. This is not that show. Okay. Well, I'm going to say, you brought, you brought the football I, into okay, it. Look, I'm going to get back to my point. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm distracting you. Okay. Go ahead. Cowboys are going to come back. Okay, we're going to go to the Super Bowl next year. <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> go ahead. Okay, so um, one of the things that you do as an athlete is you watch film, not just mm-hmm. watching yourself, but you watch the other team. You watch how they move. What do what is it that they do? Mm-hmm. What does their handoff look like? How does does can their kicker make it? Um, what's the longest? What's the farthest that they made it? Can they do a thirty nine? Can they do a fifty? What is the tendencies of them? Do they tend to? Does he always run to the outside? Does he always try to run through the pack? What happens? And when you are able to do that with your spouse, then you create um, stronger bonds with your, you know, with the other player on your team, and you're also able to see when something is going a certain direction. You can tell, oh, they don't they're not feeling this conversation. And it's not just with you. It's when they're interacting externally. So you can really guard and protect your relationship. Let's say you're at um, an in-laws house, for example, and the conversation starts to kind of get a little uncomfortable or they can start to feel uneasy. Well, you're able to notice the signs to pick up on the cues and protect them. Or if you're, um, 
let's say not feeling well, um, but you're, you're in a public place or you're even in a private place, you can just tell, Hey, something's on their mind or something's physically not right. And obviously some of these things take time, but if you're able to talk about that up front, Hey, you know what? Sometimes I, I, I'm struggling with my temper. I'm really working on it. There are some things that really kind of push me in a direction. These are the ways that we can kind of partner together. I have to personally be responsible for my temper, but here's ways you can help me. Or I personally, um, I struggle, like Michael said, hey, divorce is not a conversation I'm really willing to entertain and it will always shut down an argument. Whereas, you know, I might've been like, for real, I, I wasn't saying it as a throwaway. Like, I'm like, maybe this is not the right conversation, but maybe not using those terms would be helpful to my partner because mm -hmm. I've studied his film. So studying the film on your partner now, look, like we said, we did not do everything right. That's why we do this show yeah. because we want to try to offer we didn't advice. Do none of this what we talking about now, but it ain't never too late to it start though. Late. See, that's what people get to realize. Like you think it's like, well, we didn't start off like this and it's all kind of jacked up. Start studying your partner. Like literally start to start dissecting. You ain't got to even say anything. Just just watch them how they move whenever stuff is happening throughout life and day and work and when they get up and when they eat and when they get cranky, when they get upset, like just start paying attention to that Yeah. and watching like literally like I watch, I watch you and realize I watch you like I watch film. Like I'm like trying to like analyze like, and like don't get it right every time, but like you start looking like, okay. Why are you when she didn't your eat, eyes? <laughs> I'm like, because it's when I'm thinking. See, the said, when thoughts. she doesn't eat, when I don't yeah, eat, I, whenever I, I said, eat. okay, if she go about three or four hours, she okay. You know what I mean? But they ain't normal for most of y'all. Most of y'all really eating within three or four hours. But if she go like six, hey, about about the five hour and thirty minute mark, you need to stop. I don't care what you doing. Get this woman something to eat because it you don't want to deal with the six o'clock stuff that she didn't she didn't wait six hours. And nobody told her not to not to eat. She did on her own, but you still it's your responsibility as the husband to feed this woman We're talking within, personal, within personal the six <laughs> the six hours. Because she won't stop if she just like she go she go in on stuff, whatever she's working hard or doing this. Like she won't stop, y'all. I can't even understand. I don't get it. But that's how she operates. That's her tendency. So I gotta help the tendency say, hey, you know what? You hungry? Let's get something to eat. No, I'm not gonna know. No. You need to eat. <laughs> you need to eat. Eat, eat anyway. You need to eat. Yeah. So it's a, it's a tendency. I I study like okay. like game film though for real. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah, I'm studying you too. But I want to say this too. It's important on when you make your observation, how you now work that into the mm -hmm. relationship. Um. So for example, we use the example of eating. So if I'm upset, it's not the time for Michael to be like, "You hungry." You want to eat. It's too I late. Then, you want it's too no, late. I'm not saying it's too late. No, no, I'm no, just saying it's too late, though. like a better approach might be like, babe, I can tell you're tense. Take notes. I can tell you're tense. <laughs> okay. Um, why don't we just stop here and go get something to eat mm -hmm. and we'll come back to this conversation because you have studied and, and I might not yeah. even be necessarily aware. Now he did ask me later. He's like, do you notice when you eat, you're a little, when you don't eat and you just work through your lunch that you're a little bit more like on edge. I was like, hmm, yeah, I guess that's true. I am. Yeah. So you can help bring awareness to your partner when the time is right. You know, like if you're if there are certain things that you say, don't say like, oh, I just set you off because I, you know, no, no, sir. No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. OK, mm -hmm. let's not let's not do that. We're not going <laughs> to provoke our partner. We want to be in um, union with yeah. our partner. We want to have unity in our relationship. So I think that studying your partner and studying yourself is really important. And then sharing that, hey, I noticed this about you or you know what? I was reflecting and I think I do this. Have you noticed that about me? Is that something? Do I tend to do this? Do I? T and it can be like you said, there can be some negatives, but there yeah. can also be some really, hey, I noticed that. You know, you are really consistent as a friend. Whenever your friends call you, you always answer the phone. Like that's, is that a trait you've always had? Right. You know what? I never really even thought about it, but I was taught that, you know, this is how you maintain positive relationships. So yeah, that's what I do. Or, or the opposite. Hey, I noticed you don't answer the phone during the day. Is there a reason that you don't? Man, I just really try to knock out my work during the day so I can have the time later on or whatever it is, you know, whatever your situation or circumstance is, being able to have those open conversations and to have that good vulnerability with your partner. And again, that's something that grows. That's something that's built, being mm -hmm. willing to say, you know what, I'm going to take off this layer. Or I'm going to show it to you. And that then we handle our partner well when they show us a layer 
letting them, allowing them, making them feel safe. And that's a huge thing in a relationship is make sure that your partner feels safe enough to share. And that might not all happen up front. Like there's even, and I want to say this last thing and then throw it over to you before we close out. But I remember when Michael and I first got married, he told me he was a completely different person than what he was. There were, listen, like we said in the show already, we did not do this all the right way. But the things that I thought that he was because of the things that he told me, I was like, okay. And then he made, he switched it up on me. Okay. He switched it all the way up and he's like, well, I just didn't feel like I could share all of those things up front. Now, some of that was me and some of that was him, but it's important to revisit some of those conversations. Hey, we talked about this before. Is that still how you feel? And he's like, no, I've, you know, I've really made a shift or, Hey, do you feel safe enough to share these things with me? Or is there something that I need to do? Man, it just takes some time. Or, you know what, there is something I've been wanting to talk about. Anything you want to speak on, on that? No, I mean, I, I think you brought some very, 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 very great points. I ain't going to say good, great points. Yeah. And like just, um, you know, me trying to, I think us trying to say me is us trying to figure each other out. And part of that is really learn each other's tendencies mm -hmm. and trying to say, okay, maybe I can't even change them, but maybe I can, I can understand them. Right. It may take time to change. It may take a lifetime to change some of the stuff, how we see and how we operate. But the fact that we are aware of them. You know, because life is going to happen to both of us at the same time, sometimes separately or whatever. But just really, that, I think to me that helps build that harmony between you and I. At least have a, give us a better shot at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, one thing. Yeah. What will help make a man feel safe enough? This is for my ladies, my ladies. What mm -hmm. will help make a man feel safe enough to begin to share and be vulnerable? It's trust. I mean, it really is trust outside of the conversation, mm -hmm. right? If I if an idea of me being able to trust you starts off with, I mean, having to do what we're talking about at that moment. Mm -hmm. Can I trust you? Just hey, you know, when I say I'm at work, and you like, why are you at work, or what are you? You sure you at work? A trust like the trust is already like. Now you want me to trust you in this intimate space? Like you don't even like no. The trust is like it ain't there. Mm -hmm. So hey, you know what I mean. Hopefully he ain't doing nothing scandalous. But you know what I mean. Like that, like that happens though, right? Like. People may have insecurities, this and the other. Hopefully that's not like the man actually causing that. Mm -hmm. But I get that example to kind of like, you know, trust can be, has to be trust like uh, all the way around. Yeah. Not in the moment of we having this conversation, but like, hey, you know what? If I say I got you, I got you. You know, you, I, you can't, you can't have an issue and tell, ask me as a husband got you, but then you go call your dad or your brother. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, uh -oh. yeah, somebody may be doing that. You know what I mean? You can't, what he said was. You can't be calling your dad and your brother if your husband said, I got you, yeah. unless y'all come to agreement. That's right. So building trust is the foundation. Building in other areas yep. is the foundation for vulnerability for men. We're going to have to get into it the next show, what it come is on. for a woman. Okay. Good. So thank you guys for joining us. Make sure that you connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. We want to hear your thoughts. And check out our website for more content and resources, fusemarriages.com. Let's talk about it. Thank you.